The madness continues from Indianapolis. A spot in the Sweet 16 is on the line at Lucas Oil Stadium. The top seed in the East, Michigan, ready to roll against LSU. A look at the bracket in the East. The winner of this one will see either Colorado or Florida State in the next round. And hi, everyone, with former Villanova head coach Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. A.J. Ross will join us coming up. LSU's Darius Days said you better get some extra popcorn ready. He thinks it's going to be a good one. What do you like about this matchup? Well, there's a big contrast. LSU is ninth in the nation in scoring. They're playing a team that's 15th in defensive field goal percentage. The question for Michigan is it's much easier to guard LSU in the half court than in transition. Can they slow them down? Jawan Howard, the Big Ten Coach of the Year, he came out of the locker room aggressively banging his chest. He is fired up for this one as we take a look at the starting lineups for both teams. And for LSU, you got to keep an eye on Cameron Thomas, fourth in the country in scoring, averaging just under 23 points per game. And Will Wade in his fourth season at LSU. And we spoke with him this morning. And Steve, the big question for LSU how are they going to slow down the big man, Hunter Dickinson? Well, they've got a pretty good plan on how they're going to do it. The other question is, who is Hunter Dickinson going to guard on LSU? That's what I want to see on this first possession. Our officials tonight, Jeff Anderson, Pat Driscoll, who's refing his 21st NCAA tournament, and Rob Riley, and we are underway at Lucas Oil Stadium. Well, I kind of thought so, that they were not going to put Watford on Hunter Dickinson, and they did not. They put days on him to start. Now, they do switch a lot, like they did right there. Both teams primarily man-to-man. -man. They'll sprinkle in some zone here and there. You saw the double right away. Darius Days got a hand on that one. Shot clock at eight from Michigan, coming off a win over Texas Southern in the opening round. Brandon Johns, first shot is good. That's a big shot for him because he's taking Isaiah Livers' place. Now, nobody can really take Isaiah Livers' place. He's the second best player, maybe the best player on the Michigan team. He's out right now with that stress fracture. So that was a big play for Johns Jr. He had 11 against Texas Southern on Saturday. That tied a season high. Big opportunity for Johns with Livers out indefinitely. First LSU shot is no good by Javante Smart, but an offensive rebound. And I kind of thought that Hunter Dickinson would guard their worst three-point shooter. He's not their worst three-point shooter. That's Darius Days, 40% on the season. He had three in the opening round win over St. Bonaventure. I mean, that kid came into this game with 51 threes. Hunter Dickinson was guarding Hyatt. Hyatt is the worst three-point. He's the only guy on the LSU team that is not a good three-point shooter. I think that's a good move by Juwan Howard. Johns left open. His three won't go on the weak side. Rebound to Watford. And that's one thing that makes LSU dangerous is that Watford can get a rebound and do that. And then he flexes after he goes coast to coast. When you don't have to outlet the ball to somebody and you get a rebound, whoever gets a rebound for LSU can go, except maybe Andre Hyatt. That's what makes them so potent in transition. And then a turnover by Michigan. Wolverines a one seed for the first time since 1993 when Jawan Howard was on that team. Won the Big Ten regular season title for the first time in seven years, but lost three of five entering the NCAA tournament. Free ball for Cam Thomas is good. These guys will shoot quick. They're one of the fastest playing teams in the country. That's not how Michigan wants to play this game. Their tempo is about 275 out of 350 Division I teams. Eight straight points for LSU. Mike Smith blocked from behind. It was Thomas who got a hand on it. Days already has one three, and now LSU will set it up. Michigan, we talked about a very good defensive team, but not nearly as good in transition. That was not good defense. Days is three, no good, and Hunter Dickinson is there for the rebound, and Juwan Howard is saying, let's get going up and down the floor. Here's Dickinson. Brooks is fouled. Smith, obviously only about 5'10", 5'11". There's a big size difference between him and the LSU guards in this game. Come on, 
Limited capacity here at Lucas Oil Stadium, but there are a lot of Michigan fans. Ann Arbor is only about a four-hour drive as Johns drives in and flushes it down. I mean, can you get an easier basket than that? Driving from the deep wing to the basket, a guy like Johns, that's not even his thing. That was not good defense. Watford on the attack, had it knocked away by Wagner, but it will stay with LSU. I mean, you're gonna see Johns come to the basket here. Where's the help? What's Days doing, number four? He just, I, does it step in and take a charge? Does it wave at him? Does it do anything? Well, and certainly that's been the knock on LSU this year. We know they can score ninth in the country with 81 points per game, but they've had trouble okay. stopping oh, him. But this when guy. you got this guy, you can win a lot of track meets. Cam Thomas again. And you know what it is, Andrew? It's not that they can't play defense. They've had a lot of really good defensive teams. It's just that it's kind of, you don't know what you're getting from game to game on the defensive end. They're capable. Dickinson calling for it. He's got it. Turn around with the left hand. And that is what Jawan Howard wants to see a lot of. On that baseline, the left baseline, they must take away the right shoulder. So the primary defender needs to get to the baseline and get help from the middle of the floor. Dickinson, the Big Ten freshman of the year, also first team, all Big Ten. Watford thought about a three, drives on Wagner. Good defense by Wagner, and now LSU will send it back out with six to shoot. Thomas in the range, Jim fires a three, Whoa. and it's good again. You know, I look at the stats, and I see he's a 32% three-point shooter. The only reason he's a 32% three-point shooter is because he takes some questionable shots at times. If this guy takes all good shots, he's a 40% three-point shooter without a doubt. He's scored the last eight points for LSU. Brooks left alone, trying to answer. Off the front of the rim, and the rebound is smart. With Wagner back, smart. Rolls around and out. And it is Michigan basketball. But what a start for LSU and their freshman Cam Thomas. He already has eight points, and the Tigers have an early lead. LSU up by seven as we say hello to A.J. Ross. Well, Andrew, LSU coach Will Wade told me he's leaning more on the leadership of his players, and it's a collaborative approach that's really been paying off big between Javante Smart, Darius Days, and Trendon Watford. They're a part of a leadership group that has been meeting with Wade at least once a week, giving their input on practice, on film, on upcoming opponents. Wade says it's an open dialogue, a new dynamic that's really led to this team taking more initiative both on and off the floor. And AJ, as you point out, Javante Smart, part of that leadership council, he already has three assists tonight. Only had one in Saturday's opening round win over St. Bonaventure. Well, that time LSU brought some pressure, and Franz Wagner is a really good player in the middle of the floor. At 6'9", he's second on the team in assists, so he's a great guy handling the ball against that pressure in the middle. Darius Day is called for the foul, and you can scan this code to watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. Interesting, Michigan going into a little bit of pressure. They need to slow this LSU team down a little bit right now. Maybe do something just to throw off their rhythm a little bit. That's why they put that pressure on. Hyatt for three. Not his specialty, he's only made 10 all year. And that's what they're gonna test. That's why they have Hunter Dickinson guarding him. He is the weakest three-point shooter on the LSU team. Even yep. though he's only 6'5", that's who Dickinson is guarding. Mike Smith, the transfer from Columbia, said he was nervous to play in his first NCAA tournament game on Saturday. And Jawan Howard said, that's good, that's healthy. We want guys to feel that adrenaline before a game. Smith for three, it won't go. Offensive rebound, Johns. Put back isn't there, and Thomas comes away with it. You know, it's interesting, we're gonna see what Mike Smith does. He's a 42% three-point shooter, but he's shooting over some guys much taller than him, and now you see Cam Thomas has Smith on him. And he goes over him for two more, and Thomas already in double figures with 10. And that's, Mike Smith's a good player. I mean, he averaged 23 points a game at Columbia. He went from a mid, he went from a mid-major scorer to a big-time game manager, but shooting in this game might be a little tough. Thomas has scored the last 10 for the Tigers. Brooks for three. It's good for Eli Brooks. And he comes in hot from deep. Last three games, 
shooting 50% from beyond the arc. Yeah, I mean, he's 40% for the year. He's a good shooter. Now you see Michigan early on going to the 2-3 zone, trying to stop LSU from using the dribble. That's too open. Deep for Thomas, not this time. Long rebound, and Smith comes away with it. Races in and scoops it in for two. Great change of defenses by Juwan Howard. Let's see them stop going off the dribble and make them make passes and look for jump shots. He's got your old buddy Phil Martelli on the bench next to him, associate head coach. My man, I've only known him for 40 years, a <laughs> heck of a coach. Here's Hayek, too short on the shot. The tip not there either, and Johns, who's been active early with another rebound. Smith steps into a three. And Days goes up to get it. Various days finished third in the SEC in rebounding with eight per game. Thomas nearly lost it. You know, LSU is kind of a different team. They're a tremendous offensive rebounding team and a very weak defensive Jeez. rebounding team. But this guy, how do you stop this? I fade away off one foot. He's got 12. Michigan has 12. 12 in a row for Cam Thomas. You know, they may have to start running at him a little bit, maybe with somebody else, get the ball out of his hands. Might be a little early for that, but they got to think about it. Wagner's three, no good, and a rebound brought down by Watford. Michigan has started one for six from deep. Watford the other way for two. By the way, that guy's 6'9", who just did that, in transition, crossover to the basket. And Jawan Howard is not happy calling a timeout here with 12.13 to go in the first half. What an energetic start for LSU. And they have the early lead on top seeded Michigan. Chin from around the tournament, find your community by following your teams. Fan easier, fan faster, fan better. Download the Bleacher Report app today. Well, Michigan has 12 points on five field goals. And Thomas has 12 points on five field goals. Boy, he's come out of the gate tough, and he hasn't made really easy shots. He's made two threes. He's shooting over people. He gets him in transition, he gets him in the half court. He's just a born scorer. I like what Juwan Howard is trying to do. He's trying to slow this game down. When you like to play through a big guy, you got to make the game more half court, or he's not involved in the game. That's what he's trying to do. That time, LSU with a little pressure of, the, of their own. Sean D. Brown and Austin Davis have entered for the first time tonight for the Wolverines. Here's Brooks cutting into the corner. He locates Brown, who knocks it down. Great job of penetrating into the lane and kicking when the help came in. And here's Michigan sticking with that zone a little bit. Brown did not score in 16 minutes against Texas Southern. It's his first attempt tonight. And you know, Andrew, just to put this zone in perspective, they only do it about 7% of the time. They rarely do it this early in a game. Here's Thomas. Step back, now puts it up. And that time he's short, and out of bounds was LeBlanc. Takes us to a timeout. Will Wade and the Tigers up by five on CBS. We're back with a look at our tournament summary. How about the West Coast? Earlier today on CBS, Gonzaga advancing to the Sweet 16, and the Pac-12 still undefeated. Oregon also advancing earlier today, and UCLA just won. Meanwhile, what about the Big Ten, Steve Lapis? There's only two teams left, Michigan and Maryland, who plays later tonight. You know, is there something to be said for them beating each other up all year? I mean, that league was a gauntlet every night. You got to start thinking that maybe it's too much sometimes. In the last five times there was an NCAA tournament, so not including last year, the two finalists in the Big Ten tournament, only one of the ten teams has made it to the Elite Eight. That was Michigan when they went to the championship game in 18. But you know, one thing that we see in this game, and we had UCLA the other night, Michigan is a great team. I'm not saying they're not, and they have great players, but this team is more athletic than Michigan. And I think UCLA was more athletic. Not better, they, who knows, we'll see in the end, but more athletic. Dickinson remains on the bench for Michigan. Austin Davis is manning the middle. Watford back out to Smart. He drives into the paint and connects. 
You know, that's the thing that you don't want to give when you're in that kind of defense, is drives up the middle. Make them shoot contested jump shots. So on Saturday, LSU had four points in the first nine minutes against the Bonnies. Different story here tonight as Brooks hits another jumper. Well, this pace is so different than the St. Bonaventure game. Now they changed up. They're a little bit more of a 3-2 type defense. Now they go man to man. So they're showing zone and going man, trying to fool them a little bit. Get them to stand around. Wagner up ahead, Brooks. He's been in a good rhythm here in the first half. Back to Wagner. His shot's rejected. Watford got a hand on it. You know, even with Austin Davis in the, who can score in the low post, that was a good defense there. And a three by Javante Smart. These guys in transition are lethal. <laughs> A lot of playmakers, and now they're in this pressure here, which can be tough also, but again, they want to make it so they only have to guard Michigan for 17 seconds, not for 22 seconds. Smart has scored the last five for LSU. And the one place, Andrew, where I think Michigan has an advantage is in the paint, and they have not thrown the ball inside. Now Austin Davis gets it there, good pass. Shot clock's gonna run out. Michigan didn't get it off in time. That's their second turnover. LSU still yet to cough it up. Get nonstop March Madness news, picks, and highlights from every game on CBS Sports HQ, the free 24-7 Sports News Network. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Now they're going back to the straight man-to-man -man Michigan. You know, I like that Austin Davis looked opposite, but they that when he threw it opposite, that's the guy who should have shot it right away with the shot clock running down. Uh-oh, this is not good. Davis on Watford. Davis over, I mean, Watford over Davis, but it's not there, and Davis clears. Did a good job staying with him that time. Brooks for three. You bet. Eli Brooks carrying Michigan early. He's got eight points. Eight and a half to go in the first. Smith on Javante Smart. Got to keep an eye on that. Smart 6-5. Thomas comes to get it, defended by Brown. Thomas over Brown, he's fouled on the three. <laughs> Cam Thomas, who leads the country in free throws made, will go to the line for three shots. You definitely don't want to foul a guy who's shooting from the logo. I don't care who he is. You got to be very careful there. Uh, I don't know about that. 87% on the year, best in the eight. SEC from the free throw line. First round coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship continues tonight on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. For more info on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. So Cam Thomas has now made, has now been to the line. No, excuse me, he's now made 189 free throws on the year, which has a long way to go to get to the school record set by Pete Maravich when he made 337 during the 69-70 season. And the longtime Vermont head coach, Tom Brennan, who played at Georgia, tells a great story that he was defending Maravich, and he thought he took a charge. The ref called a block on Brennan. He got up and said, what do you mean block? He goes, hey, kid, these guys didn't come here to see you play. They came here to see him play. And in those days, the refs lived in Baton Rouge that were doing those games, <laughs> believe me. Eight-point LSU advantage. But you know, to put it in perspective, Cam Thomas is number six in the nation in free throws per game. That's a good move, but and you know what? You can see LSU in the half court defensively. I mean, Michigan can, if they're little, settle down. They can get what they want. Brown has four points off the bench for the Wolverines. Here's Watford left open, but he cannot connect. And Dickinson back on the floor with the rebound. Brooks into the corner, and now Smith had it knocked away. A turnover by Michigan, two on one. Days handles the tough pass and lays it in with a foul. What a feed from Andre Hyatt. Yeah, that wasn't really a great pass. I mean, Days did a great job reeling that thing in, but I'll tell you what, these LSU Tigers, when it comes to getting up and down, not many better, 29-21.
Back at Lucas Oil Stadium, a look at our game summary, and Cam Thomas already has 15 points. It's the 19th straight game he scored at least 15, longest active streak in the nation, Steve. When, when you teach man-to-man -man defense, you teach, here's the line of the ball. Andre Hyatt, instead of being out here, he's down here where he's in a position to be able to give good help. The drive comes, he's in a perfect spot to help. He throws, I tell you what, what a great pass. It was a heck of a... <laughs> I don't know what you want to say, reception by yes. days there and finish, no doubt about it. But the defense is really being that great position is what made that fast break happen. Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne have all made some great catches here in Indianapolis. That You can add that one to the list. It was a courageous pass, I'll say that, as LSU has opened up its biggest lead of the night. Brown steps into a three, and he connects. Sean D. Brown off the bench has provided a spark. He's got seven. I know Michigan is making shots, and that's huge. But I think LSU is happy that Hunter Dickinson is not really involved in this game that much. Thomas, not that time, and Brooks with the long rebound. Juwan Howard is saying, let's go. Dickinson has it inside, and he muscles his way for two, and the foul. Jawan Howard yelling on that Michigan bench. All sorts of energy. And Hunter Dickinson is as good a post up player, but he's always going to that right shoulder. He's left-handed. So if and plus, if you're Darius Days and you play behind him and your feet are in the restricted area, you are in deep trouble. He's also in deep trouble because he just picked up his second foul. And Darius Days to the bench. If you're that small, you got to get in front of him and hope somebody helps you if they lob it. Dickinson completes the three-point play. Six consecutive points for the Wolverines. Watford, and he stops the run. Boy, he's got a great touch in the lane. He's one of the national leaders in shooting floaters. You don't see 6'9 guys shoot floaters like that. It's usually guards. All SEC second team selection, Trendon Watford, the sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. Here's Dickinson again. Draws the double. Great oh, the open man in the lay-in for Terrence Williams. Not only a great pass, but a great dive by Terrence Williams to the basket. Smart is fouled, and he will shoot two. Well, you take a look here, you, you're going to take a look at Terrence Williams. He doesn't just stand there. The ball goes in the post area to Hunter Dickinson. And instead of just standing, he decides he's going to dive. Now, that's a guy who's only made one three all year. So why stand out there and wait for the ball? Dive. Michigan has made its last five shots. Unbelievably delicious Coca-Cola vanilla. Vanilla is hard to describe, but in a good way. Well, Steve, I'd say the rebounding battle is pretty important tonight. LSU has not lost when they've out-rebounded their opponent. They're 12-0. Michigan has not lost when they out-rebound the opponent. They're 20-0. And so far tonight, it's even at 11 on the glass. Thomas has 17 points. I mean, that was a bad spot where Terrence Williams got caught with the ball at half court. He had nowhere to go. And the double came and he lost it. Another three for Brown. Won't go. The tip is there. Williams with two more off the bench for Michigan. Quickly the other way, smart, nowhere close. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, LSU is so good on the offensive glass, and they're so bad on the defensive glass. I mean, they're really one of the worst in the nation when it comes to defensive rebound. LSU allows eight points per game on putbacks. We saw one right there. That's one of the worst numbers in the country in terms of defense on putbacks. And that's an area where Michigan is going to hope to continue to attack as Brooks finds an opening. And his three banked in. What a start for Eli Brooks. 
you know, it's always great against pressure to get the ball up and then reverse it quickly like they did there. Now, granted, that shot was a little lucky, <laughs> no doubt about it, but they did reverse it to the other side of the floor. He had 11 in the opening round, already 11 tonight. Smart from the free throw line with the answer. I'll tell you an amazing statistic. They are number two in the nation in floater scoring. They all have that floater in their game. Brooks bounces at baseline. Oh, nice move by Wagner. Man, this is end-to-end -end good stuff on CBS. Two-point game as we approach four minutes left in the first half. Yeah, they really do need to get Wagner more involved in this game, too. Watford oh. connects again. Again with that little floater. LSU is shooting 51%. Michigan at 60%. Dickinson back to Brooks. Shot clock at six. Brooks drives in, gets the bounce. Boy, Eli Brooks is showing it all to us tonight. His season high is 17 points. He has 13 in the first half. And you know what I like about what Dickinson is doing? He knows they're going to aggressively double team him, so he's getting the ball out of the post relatively quickly when he has to. And a foul committed by Wagner, and that takes us to a timeout with 3.22 to go. Catch your breath. Jawan Howard and Will Wade, their team's locked into a good one here in the first half. All right, Adam, thank you very much. You see the bracket. UCLA awaits the winner between Maryland and Alabama. How about this game in the offensive efficiency so far? LSU still yet to turn it over. Meanwhile, Michigan has 13 assists on 16 field goals, Steve. Yeah, I mean, these guys, when it comes to offense, they are really playing. How about Javante Smart? Nine points, great out of bounds play there. Nine points, five assists, and obviously no turnovers. Good defense there by Hunter Dickinson. He blocks it, and now Mike Smith brings the ball up the floor. Play set up to get Hunter Dickens in the ball, and the help comes from the baseline side on that block. Three really on. good execution by Will Wade's team. Three on two the other way, and the three for Gaines is no good, and the rebound is grabbed by Wagner. Mike Smith will slow things down for Michigan. Preseason number six in the Big Ten poll. And they won it for the first time in seven years. Dickinson blocked. Watford got a hand on it. Smart will take that three. Halfway down and out on the rebound to Wagner. Once again, Jawan Howard telling his team, let's get up and down the floor. Johns cuts and is fouled. Off the feed from Franz Wagner. Really good defense. That last play on Hunter. They see he's on the top side. So the help comes from the baseline side. Javante Smart, really smart player, saw how Hunter Dickinson was being played, and the help came from the baseline. Really good. So far, Dickinson with five points, three rebounds, and one turnover. As Johns is at the free throw line, and he misses the first after the foul on Josh LeBlanc. Coming up, at t at the half. Scores and highlights in the latest NCAA men's tournament news. It's all coming up on at t at the half. One out of two for Brandon Johns, the junior from East Lansing, Michigan. Moved into the lineup when Isaiah Livers went down. And over the last two years, with Livers, Michigan 34 and 10. Without him, just six and six. Thomas is swatted. Johns coming over to help. Yeah, really good help by Johns Jr. that time seeing that his man might need some because of who he's guarding and comes over and gets a piece of it. LSU has cooled off just a little bit. They've missed their last four shots. With two minutes to go in the opening half. Hunter Dickinson on Watford off the dribble. Watford, not that time. Dickinson the rebound and he's fouled on the rebound by LeBlanc. That's his second. You know, normally, Andrew, Michigan holds people to 65 a game. That's the average. 
but they're going to be hard pressed to keep these guys under 65. They have done a better job on Thomas, just two points in the last six and a half minutes. Contact to the ground, no call. In the corner, Brown a three. No. And a whistle. And a foul committed by Michigan. Boy, they're really paying a ton of attention on Hunter Dickinson. And that's why Sean D. Brown was open. Andre Hyatt was hanging around the lane, trying to give a little help in there. And then they skipped it across, and he had to recover. I mean, Sean D. Brown got off a good shot. It was contested. Michigan on a 10-4 run. It's down to one, as Brown was the one who committed the Wolverine foul. Hit the ref. And then a foul called on Sean D. Brown. Well, Sean D. Brown working really hard trying to keep the ball out of Camp Thomas' hands. Hey, he, if he can't get it, he can't score it. That's just good hustle by Sean D. Brown. And, and that's, that's, his, that's his third foul. So Brown, who had provided a, a nice little boost off the bench, will head back there with three fouls. And he's their best perimeter defender, which is a big reason why he was in there to play Camp Thomas. And with an assist to the referee, LSU still has not turned it over. That shot won't go for Thomas, who's definitely cooled off a little bit here as we approach one minute to play. Wagner on the attack and fouled. Strong move there by Franz Wagner. Taking it in transition. The defense is not set. That's a good time to attack him. Wagner a little shaken up out near midcourt. Getting himself situated and now ready to attempt the free throws. Michigan led the Big Ten in free throw percentage and three-point percentage. One of only five teams in the country to lead their conference in both of those categories. Now's the perfect time to catch up on Clarice before the next secret unfolds. Stream for free on the CBS app or subscribe for more on Paramount+. Plus. New episodes of Clarice return Thursday, April 1st on CBS. This Michigan team has gotten LSU to settle down a little bit in this game in the last five, six minutes. Scoreless in the last three minutes and 20 seconds. Smart trying to change that. He cannot off the glass, a scramble. Smart gets it back. Shot clock does not reset. Thomas drives. And he is blocked. Ball still loose, and now we have a foul. Michigan doing the dirty work on defense. Michigan starting to get a little bit more physical in this game, which is good for them because they have the physicality over this very athletic LSU team. First foul on Thomas, and that is the seventh team foul against the Tigers. So Cam Thomas started five for six, but since then he is one for his last six from the floor. I think Sean D. Brown did a great job on him. Unfortunately, he got three fouls, and they were trying to deny him touches. They made him work much harder to just get the ball in his hands than early on in this game. Wagner makes the front end of the one and one. Michigan has its first lead since it was 2 nothing with Wagner's parents in the house here at Lucas Oil Stadium. They've cheered for a lot of Michigan games. Yeah. His brother Mo was a pretty good player, too, on that Final Four team a couple of years back. And now with Washington in the NBA. Six-second difference between the game clock and the shot clock here for LSU. Days back in with two fouls. Days off glass too strong, and a foul called on Watford. Sending Dickinson to the ground. And the momentum on Michigan's side right now. All of a sudden, in the half court, LSU starting to struggle. If the game doesn't go up and down, it's a big difference for LSU. This game started out at a crazy pace. Now it's settled down. They've got a score in a half court. And Steve, earlier in the half, we said it was even on the glass. Now, Michigan plus four on the glass. They're starting to establish themselves 
a little bit more down low as Dickinson makes the front one, front end of the one and one. I mean, that's one of LSU's weaknesses. They really don't have, I mean, Trenton Watford's kind of like a 4-3. They don't really have a big guy. He's their biggest guy, and he's not a center oh, no. by any means. Shot clock is turned off. And Will Wade had a use it or lose it timeout. He'll use it with 12.5 to play. Juwan Howard's team getting to the free throw line in the last two minutes. Eight free throw attempts, and they now lead it by three. 12 seconds left in the first half. You know who's taking this one? Thomas with five. Thomas, step back, open, and he knocks it down. And that is how the first half will end. Cam Thomas leading the way with 19 points for LSU. And at the break, the top seed in the East, Michigan, has a one-point lead. 43 to 42, Michigan in front of LSU at the end of the first half. Sent you to at and at the half after these messages. You're watching the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Back in Indianapolis as we get set for this second half. Here's a look at the first half stats brought to you by Uber Eats. No turnovers in that first half for LSU. They had nine in the opening round win against St. Bonaventure. And hi again, everyone, with Steve Lapis. I'm Andrew Catalan. We'll hear from A.J. Ross coming up. There was a few times in that first half where we had to catch our breath. <laughs> no what doubt. do you make of the pace of the first half? Well, the bulk of the game was played at LSU's pace, so you got to give Michigan credit. They were able to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But I do think in the second half, they have to establish Hunter Dickinson if they want to win this game. He is a key guy. He only took three shots in the first half, and he did some good things. As we talked about, he's lefty. He likes going to that right shoulder, turn over there. Then he gets it in deep here. He goes to the right shoulder, he's able to make it. And then a tremendous pass here for a dunk. So get the ball in his hands a little bit more so that he can score down low and put pressure on that LSU defense. And Steve, one thing we were informed at halftime is that Sean D. Brown of Michigan was called for a flop warning in the first half, not his third foul. So Sean D. Brown, a flop warning, but he has two fouls as we get set to start the second half. And before we do, let's send it over to A.J. Ross. Well, Andrew, Michigan's Shawan Howard told me his guys need to stay patient and let their plays develop, which isn't easy to do, but they must stay within themselves. They threw the 2-3 at LSU trying to disrupt their tempo and mix things up, and he says they'll likely show some different looks in the second half. As for Will Wade and the Tigers, he told us the Ken tempo again would be key. He thought his team's ball movement and post defense in the first half were solid, but he says they need to do a better job closing out. All right, AJ, we nearly had the first LSU turnover. Instead, there's a foul on the shot by Watford, and Hunter Dickinson does not agree with that call. And based on what AJ got from Juwan Howard, he feels that they need to do something about the pace in this game here. I don't know, I didn't see that much there, but. Obviously, they called the foul. So I think Juwan Howard knows they got through the first half. Eli Brooks had 13. Can he expect that in the second half? I don't think so. Not that he can't do it. He needs to get Hunter Dickinson more involved in this game, in this half. That was the first foul on Dickinson. He fouled out in the opening round win against Texas Southern. First time that had happened in his collegiate career. One out of two for Watford, here's the pressure. The LSU wants this game as fast as they can, so they come with a little bit of more aggressive pressure than they used in the first half. There's the help for Dickinson. He locates Smith. Back over to Wagner as Michigan sets up its offense. But you can see what, what had Juwan Howard told at halftime. There's no question. Dickinson off the mark with his first shot of the second half. Winner goes on to the Sweet 16 against either Colorado or Florida State. Well, you don't see Hunter Dickinson miss many of those. Shoot 61% on the season. Watford in tight, and he misses. Michigan 19 and 1 when leading at the half this year. I mean, they're letting Whitford really be physical on Hunter Dickinson, I'll tell you that. Smart got a hand on it. Brooks corrals it. Right back inside. Great defense by Watford, but Dickinson gets it back. And then a foul called on Watford. That's his second. 
Well, you're going to see Watford here do a good job getting over the top side. Wow. Was he inside the circle? Right foot might have been. Great cut by Hunter Dickinson. And he connects. Eight points, five rebounds for the freshman. As we mentioned at the beginning, there are a lot of Michigan fans here in Indianapolis, Ann Arbor, about a four-hour drive. Smart out to Watford. Watford muscles his way in close, and a foul is called on Michigan. Take a look at this out-of-bounds play, and now Hunter Dickinson is right here. Watford's got his hands on his knees. He's not ready to take that cutaway. Look, he's got his hands on his knees way too late. Look what happens. That is so easy. Can't do that. you got to be ready in your stance at all times. Wagner called for his second foul, sends Watford to the line. Scan this code now to watch live games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Watch now at NCAA.com slash March Madness or download the app today. One point game, two minutes into the second half. Smith, very close to the baseline, able to retreat. Now he bounces it to Dickinson. There's the double, out to Brooks. That's a long three. And the rebound, grabbed by Smart. He races up ahead. Smart right at Smith. Counted and one. He is so good in transition. Javante Smart, he's got size. That is a foul on Smith, no doubt about it. This kid can finish in transition. Junior from Baton Rouge. Cousins with former Indiana star Keith Smart. He had a couple of big shots for the Hoosiers. And there's the three-point play. 11 points, 12 points, six rebounds, five assists, no turnovers. It's an LSU team that averages close to 12 turnovers per game, but still without one tonight. I tell you, I think Hunter Dickinson has touched the ball on every position, possession this half for Michigan. But give LSU credit, they're really being tough on him in that low post. Smith's three won't go. Thomas has it and gets it over to Watford. He wants to run up the floor. And he is fouled from behind by Dickinson at midcourt. That is a horrendous foul. If you're a big guy, you've got to get your fouls around the basket. That's a foul. Hunter Dickinson got fouled there. That was, I mean, I know, I, I know Days was trying to box him out, but that was a foul. And this was a bad, this is a horrendous foul by your seven-footer. That's his second. And the problem is, if he gets one more, he's sitting. And already four fouls this half for Michigan. The big guy should get all his fouls in the lane. Thomas trying to get it going here in the second half, but Dickinson takes it off the glass. Brooks races up ahead, bounces to Wagner, lost it going up, and a turnover by the Wolverines. That's number six on the night. Boy, Wagner really struggling in this game so far. Just couldn't handle it. He's one of four for just six points. Smart in the paint, and he hits. One of the best pick and roll players in the nation when he keeps the ball in his hands. He scores better than anybody off the pick and roll into that floater. Points off turnovers, 10-0 in favor of LSU. Wagner for three. Still can't get it going, tipped out to Smith though. Brooks left alone. Michigan cannot get one to go, and speaking of go, here comes Smart. Leaves it for Thomas. Oh, On the attack, Thomas is fouled. Wagner commits the foul. Watch Smart here. He got his hand hit. 
by Smith, and then Smart was grabbing his hand. And he's still in some pain on the floor. Meanwhile, Wagner picks up his third. I'm not so sure it's his hand. Well, it could be both. This is a PG show. And now Thomas sat the line after Wagner's foul. Matter of fact, I'm 100% sure it's not his hand. <laughs> Twenty points now for Cameron Thomas. He's averaging just under twenty-three per game, which is the most for a Tiger since Ronnie Henderson had twenty-three back in the ninety-four ninety-five season. Michigan struggling this half. They are just one of six from the floor. And you know, Eli Brooks he had a great first half, but he averages nine a game. Is he gonna do that again in the second half, boy? They could use it because he's gotten some open ones. It's a six-point LSU advantage. You know, it's early on, but they are really missing Isaiah Livers. Juan Howard telling us, don't really know if he's getting any better, but they're not expecting him anytime soon as Johns with an awkward shot and LSU has numbers the other way. He's smart, bounced it back to nobody. And that is how LSU commits its first turnover. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure Will Wade loves that. Timeout with 15.42 to go. The eighth seed in the East, LSU. On top of Michigan here on CBS. And you're gonna see right here, Michigan does not do a good job of guarding the number one pick and roll guy with the ball in his hand, Javante Smart. Now you stop right there. Now, Franz Wagner here is in no man's land. He's not hedging, he's not helping, he's not doing anything. He's opening up the lane for the number one pick and roll guy with the ball to just score on the floater. Michigan with the ball, five straight empty trips for the Wolverines. Smith trying to stop that and he does. Mike Smith from the outside. That stops an 8-0 run by LSU. Javante Smart back on the floor. That one won't go, but an offensive rebound by Hyatt. Smart for three. Air ball caught by Dickinson. Eli Brooks, the big first half, bounces it to Dickinson. They work it around, back into the hands of Brooks. His three is good. That all started with the pass opposite. When you're a big man, you catch it on the block, your first intuition should be to look the opposite side. That was a hockey assist by Hunter Dickinson. Tied at 51. Six points for Michigan in a span of 37 seconds. Watford around Johns, but it won't go, but a foul is called, and the Michigan bench is furious. Take a look at this ball movement. It starts out with Hunter Dickinson catching in the low post and looking opposite right away. Now the defense is in scramble mode, and they can't catch up to Eli Brooks on that side of the floor. And here's the foul called on Johns. Wow. That's not a good call. That's why the Michigan bench went nuts. First foul against Brandon Johns. And Michigan now with 16 fouls, so LSU will be shooting the rest of the half. And they shoot them pretty good. 75% as a team. Rockford comes up empty. Josh LeBlanc and Eric Gaines have entered for LSU. I'll tell you, you got to give LSU a lot of credit because when Hunter Dickinson has caught the ball, which he has a lot in his hand, he hasn't been able to take, make a move. Johns is fouled from behind. That's what Juwan Howard has been working on with Brandon Johns, trying to get him to be more confident on the floor, especially now that he's in the starting role for Isaiah Livers. Well, he makes a really strong move here. He's facing it up. Then he backs his man down. 
LeBlanc whistled for his third foul. On April 1st, no fooling. The new comedy, United States of Al, is joining the CBS Thursday powerhouse comedy lineup from Chuck Lorre, executive producer of The Big Bang Theory, Young Sheldon, and Mom. United States of Al, Thursday, April 1st at 8.30, 7.30 Central on CBS. It's an 8-0 run for Michigan, and Cam Thomas yet to hit a field goal here in the second half. What's going on there, Well, Steve? they're playing denial defense. They're not letting him, how many times is he, now he's got the ball in his hands there, but how many times has he touched the ball? He missed that shot, and LeBlanc had an easy look at a putback, and Will Wade, Wade is very upset on the LSU bench. It was a blown opportunity by LeBlanc. You know, sometimes, Andrew, you gotta just guard a guy and not worry about helping on anybody. Just like the other night, they were trying to do to Johnny Juzang when he was so hot for UCLA. Sometimes you just gotta deny him and don't worry about helping, don't worry about anything. Foul called on Eric Gaines. Look how close this came to going in for LeBlanc on the other end. Oh, boy. Austin Davis back on the floor as Dickinson will get a breather. Austin Davis was going to be the starter this year until they realized how good Hunter Dickinson was. Well, he started the first five games, then a foot injury as Brown comes in for the dunk. Largest lead of the night for Michigan. God, tough move for Javante Smart. Well, he's really good player. 16 points for the junior. Davis races out to set a screen for Smith. Smith uses it, goes all the way to the hoop, and he can't get it to go, and then Davis knocks it out of bounds. Great pass. Isaiah Livers all fired up on the Michigan bench. Juwan Howard telling us Livers is very important to have him with the team here in Indianapolis because the players listen to his voice, and he thought that was an important thing to have for the next couple of weeks as Thomas drives and scores. First field goal of the second half for Cam Thomas. He's got 23, hobbling back. Yeah. And a travel called on Michigan. And Thomas, though, you can tell, has got a little limp as he walks down the floor. And Will Wade is saying we need to clean up the condensation underneath the basket. That was some finish by Camp Thomas. But Michigan has done a good job on him in the half court. When they're not running, they're a little easier to guard. Cam Thomas has not come out of the game tonight. And he's still out there. Smart will launch. And hit. Javante Smart from the outside. The pick at the pick, the screen was coming. He waved him off because he had Terrence Williams on him. He said, I don't think this guy can guard me. And he knocks it out. And then a foul committed at midcourt by Eric Gaines. It's a 7-0 run for LSU after Michigan had a 10-0 run. What a game here on CBS. All right, Adam, thank you very much. On the right, Will Wade's wife, Lauren. On the left, his little daughter, Caroline, decked out in their purple for LSU, which is on a 7-0 run, and the Tigers now lead by three. Still only one turnover tonight for LSU. Oh, they have this like little 1-3-1 one, one defense that morphs into a man-to-man -man when the ball gets passed into the corner. In the corner is Brooks. Again! And here's what happened. It didn't morph like it was supposed to. Not supposed to give up that open three in that defense. Eli's coming. A season high 19, and he's tied a career high with five threes. Terrence Williams on Javante Smart again. 
Smart goes at him. And he knocks it down. The king of the floater. It's amazing. This team number two in the nation in floater scoring. You see it right before your eyes. 12 of Smart's 21 points have come here in the second half. Eli, not again. Oh, no. Oh, he could have gotten the I mean, he was feeling pretty good there, I can tell you. That was a heat check. Thomas straight away three. Yes! Timeout, Michigan. It's a 12-3 run for LSU. Thomas has 26. Back with our game summary in this half, Thomas and Smart have combined for 19 points. The rest of the Tigers have two, Steve. This guy Smart is unbelievably talented point guard. He makes threes. He's got this floater like you won't see anywhere. He's 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, he's got a tremendous touch in there. He makes threes, as we said. How about he's got eight rebounds in this game, six assists, 21 points, and one turnover. This guy can really play. With our producer, Jonathan Siegel, director Andy Goldberg, Steve Lapis, A.J. Ross, our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan. Thank you for joining us as we reach the midway point of the second half. A good one here on CBS. You know, Andrew, this game is kind of goes back and forth between who's ahead because when it settles down, Michigan does well. When it gets fast, LSU does well. And that's what happens every three, four minutes. It goes fast, then it goes slow. Then it goes fast, then it goes slow. Watford commits the foul. How about this? So far in the NCAA tournament, Cam Thomas, 68 minutes, 53 points, and one turnover. That's uh, not bad. Efficient. Brown attacks, and he is fouled going up. Shondi Brown over the last two games was one of seven from the floor. Did not score against Texas Southern on Saturday. But he's had a nice game off the bench tonight for Jawan Howard. I think there are opportunities to drive against LSU. They're not great at helping out. They'd rather get on you and give you some pressure. So I think driving the ball is not a bad idea. Brown into double figures. He's got 10 points. The foul was on Darius Days of LSU. That's his third. So Days and Watford each have three for the Tigers. I just really think Michigan needs to get this game slowed down. They'll be much easier to guard these guys in the half court than in half transition. 15 points from the Michigan bench, zero for LSU. Thomas, that's good defense. Brooks was on him tight. They better get ready to help. Thomas from the baseline, too strong. Dickinson with the rebound. And now numbers. You make him play a little half court, you got a much better chance to play good defense. Brown baseline and a foul is called on LSU. Looked like he was stepping out of bounds. I guess they, they call a foul. Oh, yeah, he was out of bounds. Out of bounds. No question. Wow. Instead, Hyatt is called for the foul. Wow. And a one and one. I think if the LSU bench were down that end, we would have heard him a little bit more. I think you're right. But maybe they've seen something now, Michigan. That's two straight, straight drives in a row. He did go out of bounds. But two straight drives nonetheless for Sean D. Brown. The Wake Forest transfer has a dozen. Now give him 13 points. One point game, 940 to play. Juan Howard is telling his bench, let's get going, let's make some noise. Thomas splits the D. High arcing shot won't go, and Johns tips it to Wagner. I think they should slow down here. Good Brooks. Man. Squeezes one to Dickinson, and Michigan back in front. That was a great pass by Eli Brooks. 10 points, nine rebounds for Dickinson. Here's Days launching. His three won't go. Wagner again. 
Doing a good job of boxing out and tipping it over to Brooks. Michigan riding a 6-0 run. Oh, throw it to the big guy. Brown, it's a 9-0 run! They need a timeout, LSU. Timeout, Tigers! Riding a bike should be a really fun experience. We make low maintenance bicycles for everyday riders. We were coming off a great year, and when the pandemic hit, it just stopped. We really had to think creatively. Teams allowed us to do what we call virtual visits. Hey, is that TK? Hi, how are you? We're able to see two or threefold the amount of customers from all over the world. Without teams, there's no way this would have been possible. And I really think it's going to set a standard for retail moving forward. Michigan has eight threes tonight, the most recent one by Sean D. Brown. Uh, no, he ends up completely wide open, like Cam Thomas gets completely lost, or Javante Smart. I mean, you can't be any more open than that. We've seen some wild runs in the second half. A 9-2 LSU run, a 10-0 Michigan run. LSU answered with a 12-3 run, and right now, Michigan has scored the last nine points. And I'll tell you what, Sean D. Brown has done a great job on Javante Smart since he's been in the game. Watford is fouled shooting, and again, the Michigan bench doesn't like the call. Fouls on Brandon Johns, that's his second. LSU 11 of 15 at the line tonight. After all the games are over, our studio team will have all the highlights and analysis on Inside March Madness, presented by Buick, later tonight only on TBS. Watford one out of two, he's got 11 points. And he'll get a breather on the bench as LeBlanc returns for LSU. Tigers trying to establish that pressure. LeBlanc to get a hand on it. Smith just brings it across. A good job by Smith taking it to the middle of the floor so he can't get trapped on the sideline. That's what Will Wade told us this morning. Try to pressure them so they only have to defend in the half court for about 15, 20 seconds. Shot clock right now at six. And a turnover by Smith. Gaines leads the break the other way. Tough pass to Thomas, and all he could do is get it out to Smart. That pressure really hurt Michigan that time because they had hardly any time to work, as you said, Andrew. Smart, step back three. It is off the front of the rim. Bodies flying inside, and a foul called on LSU. That was such a good push off. Two guys went down. Smith, Brown. And now LeBlanc on his feet. What a game. Michigan by three. Been a game of runs here in the second half both ways, and right now the momentum on Michigan's side, Steve. The runs are all over the place, but now Michigan's got it going. There's some great interior passes. Sean D. Brown, Hunter Dickinson able to score there. Mike Smith making a couple of really good passes. But this is how this game is going. Now you're going to see the other way. LSU's going to come. These two teams, I'll tell you, these kids today, they are balling. <laughs> Six lead changes, one and one here for Michigan after LeBlanc picked up his fourth foul at the other end of the floor. 21-0 in favor of Michigan in terms of bench points, and Sean D. Brown responsible for 18 off the bench. And he's the one who's been on Javante Smart, and Smart has been slowed up a little bit lately. See the foul trouble for LSU, LeBlanc with four, Watford and Days with three. Here comes the double, there's Days playing with three. Gaines, the freshman, will send it back out with 10 to shoot. Johns defending Smart, Smart goes inside, no, tipped around and Brown has it. 
Somebody's hurt. Now behind the play, Eli Brooks is slow to get up from Michigan. Brooks with 19 points tonight, including five threes. And you see on the right side of your screen, battling for the rebound, he goes down awkwardly. And he was smart there. He told the ref to stop the game. His team had the ball, but they only had four guys, and they were being pressed. I thought that was really slick of Eli Brooks to tell the ref, hey, I'm hurt, stop. Senior captain of this Michigan team, Phil Martelli, the associate head coach, says that Eli is the team's MVP. Not the best player, but the most important person to Michigan, Martelli says, is Eli Brooks. I trust my man right there. <laughs> he has seven. He has 19 points, seven of 11 from the floor. Trying to stretch it out next to the Michigan bench. And we're going the other way. Wow. Dickinson called for the foul. That's his third. Oh, yeah, that's a foul. That is Hunter Dickinson's foul, no doubt. Just needed to move his feet to keep Watt Whitford behind him. Watford behind him. LSU's offense has slowed down. They've missed their last five shots, and they have only one point in the last four minutes. Thomas trying to change that, drives, no good. And Thomas slow to join his teammates at the other end. Can Michigan take advantage? No, Johnson's three off the mark. Not the guy you want shooting that three. Thomas defended oh, no. by Wagner. Back out to a wide open Watford. He passes on the shot. Although I know Gaines doesn't want to shoot it. Drives in and it won't go. LSU in the half court, not LSU in the full court. I can tell you that. Six minutes to go. Brown, another three. Yes! Sean D. Have a day! Need another timeout. And Smart answers with two. What do I know? <laughs> Sean D. Brown, a new Michigan career high. He's got 21 points. 72-66. He picked a good day for the best game of his life. Wagner. Out to Johns, extra pass to the hottest man on the floor, but an air ball by Brown. But inside, Days fouls Dickinson. And that's number four on Darius Days. Let's check in with A.J. Ross. Well, Andrew, after the Wolverines, Eli Brooks took that awkward fall at the other end of the floor. He came over here and kind of walked it off and took a beat. He's back by the coaches and seems to be about to go to the scorer's table shortly. All right, AJ, we'll keep an eye on that as Gaines, the freshman, heads out, and LeBlanc comes back in with four fouls. Gaines is upset about something because somebody tried to give him a pound when he walked off, and he wasn't giving his teammate a pound. Dickinson makes the front end. Double-double for Dickinson tonight. His Team leading sixth of the season. He's got 11 points and 11 boards. Now he's got 12 points. You know, the best thing that LSU has done all night in the half court has been the pick and roll with this man. It's a 16-3 run for the Wolverines. Smart off glass for two. He should just keep going until they stop it or double it or do something different. Oh, that was a foul on Dickinson. It is, and that's number four on the big man. That's a good call. Clearly. Little bit of a flop by LeBlanc, but it was a foul. So Dickinson in foul trouble for the second consecutive game. He fouled out on Saturday against Texas Southern. And that's a problem. Five minutes they got left. Right now, Juwan Howard wants to buy three minutes with him out. Austin Davis, fifth-year senior, back on the floor. 
Thomas knocks over Smith. And they are going to wave it off. Wow. Will Wade, Cam Thomas thought he was looking at a three-point play. And Michigan had a miscommunication there. Wow, I don't know. I guess he threw that right elbow right there at him. And Will Wade is pointing up to the video board here at Lucas Oil saying, we just saw it. First turnover committed by Cam Thomas. Well, they got to get stops. They don't have to gamble. They don't have to go crazy. There's plenty of time. Just play solid defense in the half court. And now that Dickinson's not in, it becomes a little easier. Bogner, oh, off glass. And that's, you know, he hasn't played well tonight. He steps up there when Dickinson's out. Eight point game, 420 to go. Smart for three. I don't know about that shot. LeBlanc and a foul is called on Austin Davis. I gotta be honest with you. I have a gripe with that. The referee calls it from this side of the floor. The, floor, the foul happened on the other side of the basket. There was a referee sitting there. I agree with Juwan Howard. I'm like, look where this is. Two referees are there. Neither one calls the foul. The foul comes from the referee on the right side of the floor. You know, that always used to drive me nuts when I coached, I gotta be honest with you. Well, it, it's still driving you nuts and you're not coaching anymore. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> LeBlanc at the line, it has not gone well for LeBlanc at the line this year. He was six of 21 before that free throw. And that's the first point from the LSU bench tonight. I'm just glad you didn't have to call Gene in there because he probably would have buried me for yeah. what I said. <laughs> I hope they're wiring him up. I'd love to hear him bury you anyway. Two free throws for LeBlanc, a 28% free throw shooter. Six point game. Wagner, wide open, passes on the shot. Now he'll take it and make it! You know, that was the kind of defense that Watford played, like, ah, this guy hasn't made shots all night, he's not gonna make this, but that's what happens, he made it. Thomas turns it over. Michigan bench and fans going nuts here in Indy. This is the loudest I've obviously had a crowd this entire year, as we know we haven't had any, but this is unbelievable. And a whistle to stop play with 327 to go. A foul called on LSU. They're going nuts at Lucas Oil Stadium. And LSU is leaking a little oil right now. Down by nine, and it's getting late on CBS. Andrew Catalan, Steve Lapis, AJ Ross back with you in Indianapolis to look at our game reset. And LSU down by nine, both teams in the double bonus. Now, Steve, Cam Thomas, no points in the last seven minutes and 21 seconds. He only rested a minute on Saturday, has not come out of the game tonight. Can you ride him down the stretch, or is he a little tired? You have to now. I mean, that's it. It's really Javante Smart. Get him in the pick and roll, but you need Cam Thomas out there, no doubt. This is it. You got three minutes and 27 seconds left in your season. But I'll tell you what, Sean D. Brown, we talked about what he did on offense. Let me tell you something. He did a whole heck of a lot on defense, too. The last LSU foul was on Watford. That's his fourth. Both teams shooting two the rest of the way, and Davis makes it a 10-point game. And LSU, they got, they've got time. They just can't go crazy here and just start hoisting threes off the dribble. Get two, set up your trap, your pressure. You got athletic guys. Go for a steal and play it. Each team with two timeouts remaining. 3.20 to go. Winner to the Sweet 16. Whoa. Thomas. No good. The tip isn't there. And it's grabbed by guess who? Sean D. Brown. It's been all one on one. And really, this Michigan team is so well schooled in the half court defense. Very hard to score against them, as talented as they are, going one on one. And Thomas looks tired. He does look tired, no doubt. Well, they've been denying him the ball. They've made him work. After those first 10 minutes, he's had to work for everything. There's oh. a steal. Andre Hyatt flies in and slams it home. Eight point game. Still got time. LSU trying to set up its press. 
Don't have to start fouling either. Just play solid. Smith, bad place to stop, and he calls a timeout. So now Michigan with one remaining. Andre Hyatt with the jam on the other end, cutting it down to eight. A look at the bracket in the East. The winner of this one moves on to the Sweet 16 against either Colorado or Florida State. That game right now on TBS. They're taking it out in a tough spot. So if you're Watford here, you want to favor that left side in terms of don't let the ball go into the left corner. Make it come right here in front of you so you can get a good solid trap. And remember, Watford is out there with four fouls for LSU. They break the press. Wagner the other way! Franz will pump you up! Michigan by 10! And then a foul committed by Brown to stop the clock with 2.07. You know, if you let the ball go into Hunter Dickinson in the middle of the floor so easily there, you've got absolutely no chance. Wagner has come alive in the second half. He now has 13 points and six rebounds. You know, if they're going to set their pressure up, they can't let Hunter Dickinson flash to the middle. There's got to be somebody on him there. It's way too easy because he's a good passer, and he's seven feet tall. Smart makes them both. Brooks back on the floor for Michigan after exiting earlier in the half with an injury. You definitely want to use clock now. Inside, two minutes to play. If you're LSU, you've got to put a little more pressure on the ball. You can't let them just dribble it out like this. This is too easy for Michigan. Wagner feeds Dickinson. Five to shoot. Dickinson blocked. Michigan gets it back, and it's Wagner again. 15 for Wagner. Smart for three. Won't go, long rebound LeBlanc. Right back out to Smart, shoots it again. Another miss, and a foul called on Michigan. So LSU will shoot two. Sean D. Brown commits his fourth. Juwan Howard wants to know why you foul him. He's right. Plus, you tell your guys, you get one rebound, the game's probably over. Steve, how about this? Sean D. Brown, when he's on the floor, Michigan is plus 21 tonight. That's a guy who's affecting the game in more than just shooting the ball. Thomas makes them both. He's got 28 points. Let him go. I mean, now you got a foul. LeBlanc almost fouled Smith. You need to foul. You're going to have a minute to go down eight. I think they should have given one here. Now, forget it. Don't foul now. Ten on the timer. One minute to go. Smith. Air ball. His size has hurt him tonight. He's done a good job leading the team, though. Only five points for Smith, but he does have six assists. Yeah, he's been... Not a great shot either. You'd rather get something going to the basket in that situation. Here's Smart. Trying to get it to Thomas. He's got it here. Thomas right past Dickinson for two. And Will Wade calls timeout. 84-78 with 44 seconds to go. I wish I could wake up and say hi to a giraffe. Ride a train in the sky and visit faraway galaxies. Stay in the magic at a Disney Resort hotel. So close to the parks, you can make all your Disney wishes come true. And now you can save up to 30% on rooms at select Disney Resort hotels. Imagine the magic of staying here.
One timeout left for each team. It's a six point game. And the possession arrow favors Michigan. You got to get your full court press set up. Try and force the ball into the corner. Don't let Hunter Dickinson catch it in the middle of the floor. Get one trap, and then you got a foul. If you could possibly, I mean, really, everybody, Sean D. Brown is the worst free throw shooter on the floor. He's also the guy furthest away from the ball right now. Brooks gets it into Smith. Oh, he travels. Oh, he travels. He travels. He Michigan travels. gives it right back. Right here, you're going to see he's, the defense comes out. Oh, he does that little skip. That's a good call. Jeff Anderson all over that one. That wasn't an easy one to catch either. Watford inbounds to Days. Find Javante Smarter, this guy. This guy is Thomas. Thomas at the free throw line. Thomas around Wagner. No. And the rebound is grabbed they got by foul. Michigan. Eli Brooks. Took a bad shot. Michigan fans on their feet here in Indy as Watford just fouled out. Well, that was a big miss by Cam Thomas. It could have cut it to four. I think they're better off with the ball in Javante Smart's hands in that situation and let Thomas maybe spot up. Some confusion on that last foul. They are taking a look. It was initially called on Watford, but now we're hearing they're changing it to Thomas, which is a big deal because Watford would still be in the game. Oh, yeah, it's no, on it's Watford. Watford. It's Watford. Why is he still in? Hey, you just heard one of the officials say the foul is on two. That's trended Watford. Yeah, he's out. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's definitely him. And now he is finally accepting the fact that he's fouled out. He's hugging his teammates. 11 points for Watford tonight, only three this half. for the delayed stoppage is Cameron Thomas had a little bit of blood, so they clean him up. 31.3 on the clock. Michigan will be shooting two free throws. Try to make it a three-possession game. You know, if I'm Michigan, I may be wrong. I think that this stoppage here hurts us. You got a guy waiting to shoot free throws. It's Brooks at the line. He's only missed three the entire year. It's 36 to 39. Then again, what do I know? I worried about everything. <laughs> Maybe I should have worried less. I can't disagree. 86-78. <laughs> Smart for three. Brooks again in the middle for the rebound. Got to foul one time. That it's over. Will Wade is not going to foul. And they're going nuts here in, in Indianapolis. What a great job Juwan Howard has done this whole year. National Coach of the Year. They've been unbelievable, Michigan, without Isaiah Livers. First time in school history, Michigan is in the Sweet 16 for the fourth consecutive tournament. Tip your cap to both teams. That was an incredible basketball game. And Michigan is moving on to the Sweet 16.